for our series today, um, it's called 10 and um, Perfect Love, perf uh, Perfect Law, Perfect Love. And as many of you know, this we're talking about the Ten Commandments, and this is our third week. And um, I'm sure many of you still remember. How many of you here still remember your Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments. Okay, only three. Okay, last week there were five. Okay, what happened to the other two? Okay, <laughs> so. Um, you know, um, we're talking about the Ten Commandments, and I'm sure growing up in this nation, you're very familiar with the Ten Commandments. I'm sure you've been, uh, you've been made to memorize them, but our heart here is not just for us to memorize the Ten Commandments, but understand the essence or the heart of the Ten Commandments. Because we will be able to properly apply that in our lives if more than just memorizing, it is... Um, you know, the essence, the truth, the, the principles behind it, you know, the scriptures behind these Ten Commandments or, or to support these Ten Commandments are, uh, are made aware or we are made aware of those things. And so, again, our heart is not just for us to memorize this, but for us to know the essence of the Ten Commandments. Now, week one, we talked about this one, uh, you shall have no other gods. Week two, we, should, we talked about you shall not make idols or worship them. And today, we're going to be talking about you shall not take the Lord name in vain. Our scripture for this morning is in Exodus chapter 20 in verse 7, and it says here, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Lord, we thank you for your words. Father, we pray that you would bless and anoint the preaching of your word today. God, Lord, thank you for the privilege the honor, Lord God, and the opportunity that we are given to even call you as our God. Help us, O oh Lord, today to understand, Lord, what it means to honor and to revere your name and not misuse it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. See, in another translation, this scripture says, Do not misuse the, the name of the Lord. Do not take the, Lord, the Lord's name in vain. And so, why did God command for His people to not misuse His name? What is so important about His name that He would put it as number three in His commandments? And if it's so important, what's in God's name in the first place that, you know, we, we should honor it and revere it and not misuse it? And how can we practically live that out in our day and age? And so, these are the things that we will try to answer as we look at these third commandments. And hopefully, we will learn a lot from um, the scriptures in this. And so, let's start first with what is in a name in general? What's in a name? Earlier, we asked you the question. We asked um, each other earlier about the question, um, what's the story? What's the origin of your name or how you were you given that name. I, I, I got to know Carlo and um, Carlo, the reason why he got Carlo is because his father is named Carlo as well. And so um, that's why, you know, um, they, they got it and I, I challenged him to get to know what his name means. And um, some of you perhaps, you know, Cesar, Pastor Cesar here, you know, I found out that your name is not just, uh, you know, dictator. Your name is a boy with thick hair. That's what Caesar means, okay? <laughs> Is that better than a dictator? Okay, a boy with thick hair. Okay. And so, uh, Brandel is, um, Brandel's not here today because um, he's taking care of his son who is sick. And so, please do pray for him as well. Pray for his son, Rafa. Bra uh, 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 Brandel's name means a little fire. And so, interesting names, no? My name is Christian. And as, um, you know, uh, many of us, I guess, are familiar with it. It means a follower of Christ. And uh, my second name is Alan. And so it means, uh, what's that again? Handsome, I think. <laughs> so it means a handsome follower of Christ. I mean, I did not come up with that. Okay, you, you Google it. Okay, it's true. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay, not all those names, okay, are properly, you know, uh, placed with people. And so I could be an exception. Now, when we were considering the names of our three kids, I have three kids. And um, um, I have um, a seven-year-old a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Um, this, this one, uh, she's our eldest. Her name is Gabby, and her name is Gabrielle Ann. And we named her Gabrielle Ann because um, Gabby or Gabrielle is one of our, I guess my wife and I, it's one of our favorite names, and we both agree that it's something that we want to give um, one of our children that name. And it means, the, the word Gabrielle means strong 
or the word Gabriel means courageous, and the word Anne means grace. And so um, we, we gave her uh, Gabriel Anne because we're believing that in the grace of God, she will be a strong and courageous woman. Now, this is our son. His name is Christian Miguel. Now, obviously, if you notice from our first, uh, firstborn, Gabby, she, or, she doesn't look, I guess, she looks more like her mom than me. And so, just so that I will feel secure, I asked my wife, is it okay? At least man lang sa pangalan kamukha ko yung anak ko. And so I asked her if it's okay to give my son the name uh, Christian. And his second name is Miguel. Miguel means who is like the Lord. And so, and then our last, um, gr- uh, our last kid, her name is Christina Amina. We, ca- we call her Am- uh, Cami, but Christina came from Christian again. Again, because just to appease my insecurity, <laughs> because all of them look more like their mom. Okay? And so I asked, um, I-, I asked my wife to name her Christina. Uh, if we can name her Christina, she agreed. And then we placed Amina. So she, her name is Christina Amina. And Amina actually means um, God is faithful. And the reason why we named her um, Christina Amina or God is faithful is because of the story, um, how we got our kids in the first place. My wife and I got married in 2005, but um, after three years of being married, we couldn't have a baby. Uh, we had a hard time having a baby, and we've consulted some doctors, and the doctors found out that my wife had a condition. And in fact, those two conditions, and um, I won't just tell what, the, what those conditions are, but um, the doctor, suffice it to say that the doctor said, um, your chances of having children are very slim. In fact, one doctor said it's about 10 to 16% chance of having a baby. And so one of our friend doctors even advised us, why don't you consider adoption? And so at that moment, we were so, um, I guess, our our hearts were very sad at that time, uh, knowing that fact. But yet, after praying and after, you know, um, um, her going through uh, a procedure, you know, God blessed us. A year after with Gabby, and then the year after with Miguel, and then the year after, okay, <laughs> Cami, okay. So I was kidding to God, God, are you trying to make a point here? They said 60, 10 to 16 percent. I mean, are you going to give us 10 to 16 kids? Okay, so I was worried about that <laughs> also. But we named Christina Amina because her name means God is faithful because when we had her, it is a statement, I believe. It is a testimony from God that no matter what big problem we're facing, no matter what impossible situation we are in, that God is faithful. And so looking at her now, she always reminds us of the faithfulness of our God. And so that's the story behind the names of our kids. Now, behind uh, any, uh, behind the name of any individual is more than just a story. In fact, a name, if you would, um, I guess, think about what names stand, uh, what names stand for, it speaks of affinity as well. More than a story, it also speaks of affinity. It speaks of, I guess, a relationship. For example, if your surname is Ayala or if your surname is Stan, then you're related to the clan or the, the, the group of the Ayalas. If your surname is Miller or your surname is Luna, okay, so you are affiliated with that family. You're, you're connected. You are related, perhaps, with that family. Now, not only surnames, but I guess um, when you call people by a first name, on a first name base, it means that you're already close, Right? Like in the office, oftentimes you call each other by surname or ma'am or sir first, but then when you get close to each other, you start calling each other with, by first name. And so that speaks of the kind or the degree of relationship that you have with one another when you start calling each other by a, uh, by a first name or on a first name basis. But not just um, having first name basis, but you know, the closer you are with people, you even have, um, I guess... Um, um, names that you use as terms of endearment. Some of you, you call your, your wife, honey. Some of you, you call your um, fiance, um, sweetie, or love, okay? Or babe, I just hope that you don't call someone else's wife that, okay? You just call your wife or your fiance that. Now, it's not just affinity, but also identity. 
A name is important because it speaks of who we are and how people identify us. Now, several weeks ago when we all voted or most of us here voted, I'm sure the first thing that you looked at in the voters list is your name. Because if your name is there, then you are entitled to vote. You have the right to vote. And so that's the power behind a name. It gives us identity and it's a way for people to identify us. But not just identity and affinity, it's also about reputation. Okay? It's not just who we are, but it's also about how people perceive us to be or who people perceive us to be. Now, I'm sure some of you here, the reason why you go to a restaurant for the first time is most likely because a friend gave a good report about that restaurant, right? Because a friend recommended, oh, the food here is good. They have unlimited rice. They have unlimited coffee. They have unlimited so-and-so. They, they have nice steak here. They have very big, juicy burgers. Okay, so later after this lunch, okay, uh, please stay first, okay? Your mind, I'm sure when I mention those those food, baka yung minds nyo, nandun na sa lunch mamaya. Okay, please stay here first. And so, um, when you choose an airline, like uh, a few days ago, we were um, um, looking for an airline with which we can use when we um, go attend a training um, abroad. And so, um, you choose which ones are highly recommended because according to their reputation, you base your decision. Now, in the same breath, the reason why God, I believe, is wanting us or commanding us not to misuse his name is because he does not want other people and even us relationally be affected. He wants your relationship with him right and that's why we need, we need to speak of his name right. Because when we misuse his name, it actually has the power to corrupt our affinity with him, our identity, as well as how people perceive who he is. Now, I'm going to explain more about that as we go to this preaching. But what does it mean first to misuse the name of God? Okay, Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Let's go back to that. No? It says there, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now, I underline here the word in vain because when you say in vain or taking his name in vain or misusing his name, it means you are emptying his name or you are rendering his name useless or futile. Interesting, interesting. Is it really that possible for us to experience a life wherein God's name is futile or useless or empty? Well, here it says, if you take the name of the Lord God in vain, it is actually in a way emptying it of its power and rendering it useless. I say in a way because it's, be, it's a matter of um, in the person speaking it. Now, in what ways do we take the name of the Lord God in vain? First, of obviously, is with our words. We take the name of the Lord God in vain with our words. In the message translation of the same verse, it says there, No using God's name or the name of God, your God, in curses or silly banter. God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. I guess um, nowadays we loosely use the name of God. And I won't, show, I won't ask for a show of hands who does it, but I am sure your friend or the friend of a friend of your friend, okay? Somehow you've heard that person perhaps um, loosely use the name of God. Like nowadays, it's so common for people when they are excited or they hear very good news, they will say, oh my. Or uh, for example, if someone, um, you know, I mean, you're nagulat siya siguro no? in, in Filipino, especially when, when, when this person, you know, pag nagulat siya, I mean, Diyos ko po, okay, kung ano yung lumalabas sa kanya, you know, and so, and um, some people, when they're so upset or so mad, you know, sometimes instead of screaming, screaming a curse, they just scream, God! And so, it is in those situations that this scripture is saying, we are not supposed to do that. Because the Bible says we are not supposed to use the name, the sacred, the holy name of God in curses or even in silly banter. It is so irreverent to equate the word of God with a curse. 
It is so dishonoring to Him when our emotions are speaking of anger or rage and then we are using His name to communicate it. That is just so irreverent to God. Um, our kids, every now and then, would correct each other and um, would correct us. Like every now and then that, you know, my wife and I would slip, would slip and would say it and then they would say, you know, Daddy, you said it. That's a bad word, okay? It's because we taught them not to use the, Lord of, the, the name of the Lord your God, our God, in vain. We actually learned it from Pastor Steve. When Pastor Steve um, shared about um, how he raised his kid, and he said that in his family, his kids, are not to, uh, his kids are not allowed to use the name of Jesus or um, speak of the name of Jesus, you know, in curses or in small talks or, in, or make fun about it. He's only, they're only allowed to speak of his name via praise, if they're preaching, or if they are praying. And so, I mean, from him, we, we learned that example. Some people, they misuse the name of the Lord your God, uh, our God in vain by sometimes, you know, uh, manipulating others towards certain decisions. Some people said, or a, a guy would say to a girl, you know what, you should say yes to me because God told me so. I mean, I don't know if you've heard those comments already before that, you know, um, people would loosely use the name of God to manipulate people into making certain kinds of decisions or to overpromise, saying that, you know, God will bless you because you have that fish symbol behind your car. I mean, that is still misusing the name of the Lord our God in vain. Um, interestingly, I found out about um, Jews, especially ancient Jews, when they are transcribing the Bible, when they are literally writing the Bible or copying or making a copy of the Bible, what they would do is, you know, every time they would write that, they would, you know, meticulously and carefully write it. But then every time that they would have to write the word God, okay, they would put down the, the pen that they're using and they would wash themselves first. And then they would grab a special pen. And then that is what they will use to write the name Lord or God. That is how reverent, that is how sacred the name of God is to them. What happens after is they would wipe it, set aside a special pen, and then use the regular pen to write the other words that are not God or G-O-D or L-O-R-D. That is how special, that is how reverent they are in uh, terms of using the Lord our God. Now, am I saying that um, we're not supposed to text that already? I mean, pag nagte-text tayo ngayon, di ba? Whenever we text, you know, God bless you, we would first wash ourselves, okay? Before you type in the word God, no. But I hope that we get the heart of how they do it. Because in them... God's name is so special, is reverent. They revere it so much that they dare not use it any less. And so that's why Jesus, even in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Jesus was saying in terms of, you know, communicating to God and using the name of God, we are to hallow, means to put weight, to revere, to honor, to, to, you know, to put glory in the name of our God. And so my prayer and my hope is that we would learn to do that, that we would appreciate and honor the name of God in our conversations. But not just in our conversations, people misuse the word of God even in actions. Okay? In Acts chapter 11, verse 26b, it says there, in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. Interestingly, prior to this, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they would just be called as, you know, these are the disciples, uh, these are the followers of the way, okay? That's how people know them. But yet, somehow, because people know about Christ with whom they are, or, or of whom they are preaching, and when they saw the lives of these Christians or these disciples, they said, these guys are Christians or Christ followers, they deemed it worthy for these people to be named after the one that they are preaching because of the lifestyle that they are living. 
If we look at the lives of Christians today, can we still say the same? I mean, nowadays, it's so, um, it's so common. I mean, Christianity is a fad nowadays. Like um, in, in basketball games or even in um, any other sport or even in acting, oftentimes people would associate themselves that they are Christians. Unfortunately, not all of their lifestyle are backing up their claim. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, um, sometimes we, I guess I want to confess here that there are moments that, especially in driving, sometimes in my mind, when I do some things that out of human nature, okay, I know could cost uh, another person to stumble. How I wish. My prayer is that, Lord, sana po wala na akita na taga church. <laughs> How I wish, you know, not, not, you know, someone from church did not see, okay, what I just did. Now, I'm sure many of us perhaps, or maybe a few lang siguro kasi konti lang naman tayo makasalanan dito, no? <laughs> maybe we, ha- we have that mentality that when there are things that we do, we just say, Lord, sana wala nakakita. Sana walang nakakita ng ginawa ko. But you know, this scripture is actually a good, you know, a good grid, if you may, of how we should live our lives. See, the scripture is saying, before you utter a word or before you do an action, is it bringing glory and honor to the name of Christ? Is it worthy of the honor and the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm preaching this to myself as well. You know, um, this actually gives simplicity to a lot of great questions that we have in church. As a pastor, especially in classes, we've been asked so many times, Pastor, what do you think about this? Pastor, what do you think about this? What do you think about smoking? What do you think about uh, drinking? What do you think about uh, dating? What do you think about holding hands? What do you think about um, re- watching these kinds of movies? What do you think about reading these kinds of book? Actually, if you look at this, this actually makes it simpler. Because in analyzing, evaluating all of those activities, you pray to God and say, God, if I do this, if I watch this, if I read this, will this bring glory to your name? And that brings simplicity to our actions. That brings clarity to those seemingly gray areas of Christian living. Um, I'm reminded of uh, one situation in terms of, you know, our actions being... uh, uh, I guess an example of honoring Christ's name. Uh, one time in our, uh, we lived in a condo before, and in our condo, um, one of the people, one of the helpers in the condo um, approached our, 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 our unit and talked to our, um, uh, yung kasama namin sa bahay, and then she said, you know, she's being bit, beaten up um, by yung, 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 ano niya, yung mga uh, boss niya. And so, and not just that, but uh, be, n- never verbally abused din siya. And so, wala naman siya dito, no? Wala naman, okay. And so, um, somebody called the, the police. And so, the police went there and they interrogated him. And so, um, the, oh, the, the guy, uh, the, yung boss nung yung helper, you know, went to us and said, Kayo ba yung nagano? Kayo ba yung tumawag? Were you the ones who called the police? And he was so upset, he was so mad, and he was questioning, Why would you do that? Why would you intervene? Why would you, inter- why would you, you know, um, intrude in our privacy? And so, of course, we, tell, we told them, you know, it's not us who did that. But yet, when I talked to him, Okay, sabi ko, I mean, I'm sure, what, nangyayari ba talaga yon? And then he said, hindi kasi ganito yung scenario, magkamakana kami. And to make the long story short, okay, he said, every, I mean, he would do it, but yet, hindi naman ganong extent. And so, on another day, I visited him, but this time, I was on my way to work. And so, um, I visited him, and when I visited him, I was wearing a kids' church shirt. A Victory Kids' Church shirt. Okay? And so, when I was there, sabi niya, okay, kamusta na kayo? How are you? Uh, how's you? Know? And then he saw the shirt. Oh, you're from Victory. 
I also go to victory. <laughs> and so it is so easy nowadays, right? To carry the name of Christ. There was a quiz show um, years back as well. Uh, I think this, this was in the 80s or 90s. And in the quiz show, it's a very popular, it's a movie actually. It's a movie about the quiz show. In the movie, in the movie because um, the quiz, uh, I guess if you're familiar with that, no? Um, there was uh, a, 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 an, exp- an expose that happened because one contestant squealed that um, the contest was rigged. And the one who said or, uh, or blew the whistle was actually a man who was very educated and come from a, a good line of educated family or a good educated family line. And so when he, um, you know, squealed that out and it became big, it became news and, you know, the, the, the show was exposed, his family talked to the guy, okay, to the guy who, whist- who blew the whistle and said, why would you do that? Is it because of the money that you would do- did that? Is it because of... You know, time or attention? Why did you go and agree, you know, to connive with these guys and rig the whole thing? You're an educated man. And the guy said, Dad, don't worry, it's just a show. But the dad said to him, it's not just a show. You are carrying my name. You are carrying my name. And so, as Christians, whose name are we carrying? Number three, it's not just with words, actions, but also with our heart. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 and 9, it says there, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. You see, before we honor God with our lips, before we honor God with our actions, it has to start from our hearts. That is why Peter preached this in 1 Peter chapter 3. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. I believe the reason why a lot of Christians fail to honor God with their lips or even with their actions is because Christ is really not Lord of their hearts. And so I hope and pray that we would always invite God and ask God and submit our hearts to Him every single day and submit our actions, our words, and our hearts under His Lordship. And so if those are the things that misuse the name of God, the Bible also gives us ways how to use, the, uh, how to use the, uh, the name of God properly. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. See, a proper way to use the name of God is to, uh, you know, to, uh, to use it in times of impossible situations or to run to it in times of trouble. In Acts 3, verse 6, it says here, But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. See, we use the powerful name of Christ as well when we pray for people to get healed. We took time to pray for people to get healed. We took time to pray for people who are sick. And so, in the name of Jesus Christ, those people who were praying for those who are sick, they were claiming healing for those people. And guess what? A lot of them got instantaneous healing that night. Why? Because there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? There is power in the name of our God. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The name of the Lord is powerful because it is, as Acts chapter 4 says, it is the only name by which men can be saved. And so again, the encouragement of God to us is not to misuse it, but to use it properly. To appropriate it in our lives in times of trouble. To use it to pray for people who are sick. And also to share to people that the only name by which they can be saved is that if they confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to end with this story and <clears throat> before I pray. This is the story of one of our church fathers. His name is Polycarp. And Polycarp, um, he's one of our, I guess, one of the early leaders of the church in the first and second centuries. And um, during his time, a lot of... Um, Churches were blessed. He's a, good, uh, he's a good pastor. In fact, he became the bishop of Smyrna at that time. 
but because he lived in an age of persecution, an era wherein Christianity is illegal and it will cost you your life, Polycarp, Polycarp was caught and he was sentenced to death unless he would recant and curse Jesus instead of um, show his allegiance to him. And so, <clears throat> the penalty that was given to him is if he would not recant, is he would be burned alive. And so, Polycarp, instead of misusing or degrading or, you know, um, dishonoring the name of Christ and dishonoring Christ himself, he said this, 80 and six years I have served him, and he has done me no wrong. How then can I blaspheme my King and Savior? I bless you, Father, for judging me worthy of this hour so that in the company of the martyrs, I may share the cup of Christ. What are we saying here? Am I asking you to die for Christ? No. See, it's actually easy to die for Christ, but it's actually harder to live for Christ every single day. But the good news is, just as God gave this man, Polycarp, the grace to honor him even with his last breath. The Bible is saying that grace is also available for you and me to honor Christ every single day with our every breath and with every action that we take. That is possible with the grace and in the love of Christ. Amen? Can we just pray? Lord, thank you for this time. And again, thank you for your words. Lord, we recognize that you are here. And at this moment, Lord, we just, we just ask, Holy Spirit, Lord, move. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Even as we look back, Lord God, and if there are moments, if there were times that we misused your name, maybe in a conversation, in a confession, Lord, maybe with our action. God, Lord, I pray is that, Lord, today we are sorry for what we did. Lord, you said in your word that you are gracious, you're faithful. That if we confess our sins, Lord God, you forgive us our sins. Lord, you are merciful. And Lord, today, God, Lord, in the name of Christ, Lord, we repent again from those haphazard, Lord God, or those comments, irreverent comments that we've made about you. Father, I pray that you would purify our lips, Lord God, once again. Lord, thank you that it springs from our hearts. And so we pray that you would bless our hearts, Lord. In fact, can I ask you to just put your hand over your heart? Lord, we pray that you would be the Lord over this heart. Lord, even as Peter said, Lord God, in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Lord, today, Lord, we are making that decision. Fresh commitment, Lord God, of our hearts. Jesus, be the Lord of our hearts. Father, thank you that you will give the grace, Lord, to every single one of us here in the way we talk to our spouse, in the way we talk to our kids, in the way we talk with one another. Lord, in the way we conduct our affairs, Lord God, our actions, Lord God, our businesses, Lord God, Lord, thank you. Lord, you will give each one of us here the grace, Lord God, to, and the guidance, Lord, to do things that will honor you in every word and action, Lord, thank you that you will give us the grace to honor you. You know, as before we end and as all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, I want to give an opportunity to some of us. Maybe the reason why you're here is because God wants you to experience Him in your life. And perhaps you're someone that you say, it's been hard for you to honor God with your lips. It's been hard for you to honor God with your mouth or with your actions. 
You know, the key to that first is allowing Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your heart. And if you are here, maybe you're saying, Lord, I don't want to dishonor you with my lips and with my actions anymore. And I want to receive you, Jesus, as the Lord and Savior of my life. If that is your prayer this morning, can I just pray for you? Please lift up your hand so that I know who to pray for. Yes. 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 Several hands lifted up. Yes. If you're lifting up your hands, you can put it down and just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me so that my sins can be forgiven and that I can have life in you and with you. Lord, today, I repent from my lifestyle of sin. I repent from the words that came out of my mouth and the bad actions that did not honor your name. Lord, today, I invite you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my heart to be the Lord of my life. Today, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, today, be the Lord of my life. In your name I pray, amen and amen.